Hello, and welcome to Talking ELT, the easiest place to learn about the big issues in language teaching. Today, we'll be continuing our conversation about artificial intelligence with Hayo and Ben by discussing the impact on exams, assessment, and feedback. So we've been talking a lot already about the impact on teaching, um, and we've touched a couple times in that conversation on feedback. Mm. And I think I would like to move us on to broadly what the impact on assessment is going to be, because I think we've, we've kept coming back to this because the two are intrinsically linked. Um, so yes, I think that's probably our next, our next topic. So more broadly, zooming out, what do you think the impact of AI on assessment might be? Um, I mean, I think people are already aware that the use of certain assessment techniques um, are not going to work in the future. So just yeah. asking people to write a, an assignment um, was nice and easy mm. uh, way of assessing someone's language skills. That That is not the future. Um, unless unless it's done by hand in the classroom, potentially. <laughs> right, okay. Okay. Yeah, you can do that and, and you can kind of get people to scribe with a you know with a quill or something yeah, whether, yeah. whether that's going to help them in the no, future no. you know uh, probably not so um so i think you know in that sense assessment is good is going to have to adapt to what are the skills needed in the workplace or in yes. the, whatever life uh, engagements you have so um and since that is more likely going to be the creative use of generative ai uh, the effective use of it, I, I imagine that's going to be uh, a key part of assessment in the future. I would take that one step further, mm. <clears throat> and I would say that maybe not in the next year or two, but you know, in the not too distant future, assessment is no longer a separate term. And the reason okay. why I say that is because um, the computational turn, uh, which is you know the the emergence of uh, a whole range of different opportunities afforded by things like uh, big data as well as the ability to use analytics to extract information from it and so on and so forth mm. actually means that possibly already now but certainly in the not too distant future you'll be able to essentially see as a teacher as a school as an administrator or even as an individual learner by the way in real time everything that is happening all the interactions so let's 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 make it more concrete let's say that you're a teacher you've got 20 learners in your class you'll be able to to see what everyone is interacting with because there'll be some digital trace there'll be some record because the majority of what learners are already doing but certainly will be doing will involve or at least mm -hmm. be mediated by technology in some way. Mm -hmm. So you can literally, almost like you know, watching a, the water in a river flow past, you can just you know, go and fish in it at a moment in time and say, you know, this is the level of my, this is what they're engaging with, this is what they seem to be interested in. Yeah. And so assessment becomes, in a way, almost meaningless. And mm -hmm. I think the most important reason for that is because the, as an individual learner, um, and we're not quite there yet. And in fact, I'm developing something myself at the moment around Ooh. this. <laughs> uh, maybe at another podcast <laughs> we can talk about that. This uh, is that as an individual learner, you should be able to capture that at any moment in time and then present it to either a teacher or an employer or a colleague, etc. Mm -hmm. And that can then give that person, of course, you know, based on your personal choice, what yeah. you want to share and what you don't want to share, that person a an imaginably comprehensive and detailed insight into not just a few test scores that you observe, but everything that you've done in a particular domain. Right. Yeah. Right. That's fascinating. So, but do you, do you think there's, because you, you, I always want to make this distinction between formative assessment and continuous summative assessment. Mm -hmm. Of course. Of course. Um, so that it may be that that disappears, but at the moment mm -hmm. when, um, you know, people might do uh, weekly tests or unit tests, and those might be recorded, and those are built up to an end of year evaluation, or mm. go, and that's that's what I would call continuous summative. Yep. Um, it's going to be used in some way to evaluate their success. Um, but a formative assessment, obviously, as you know, is is more about information going back to the the student, mm -hmm. um, and there are times when the student wants 
to be confident that that's not going to be part of their summative mm-hmm. assessment mm-hmm. so that they can explore, they can try things out and, and not worry about whether it's going to affect their end of year grade. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so at the moment, I feel we have to kind of keep those sets of data almost separate. And, and, and perhaps that was what you were saying when you're saying that the, the learner might be able to choose what data they're sharing. Mm. So you're kind of distinguishing uh, data, which is about your performance in practice, kind of uh, exploratory activities and activities which are more a, dis- you know, a check on what you can actually do. Mm. But it may be, it mm. may be that we actually get to a stage where there's so much data that each individual uh, activity has uh, that, that that distinction is important because each activity has such a small impact um, uh, on the final evaluation that, exactly. that it doesn't matter exactly. anymore. Yeah. yeah. And I guess it, it brings us right back down to the underlying question. What is the purpose of different types of assessment? Yeah. Well, broadly speaking, it's either an identification of what a person can do and what they know and what they believe perhaps in a certain domain, yeah. which is you know summative perhaps, and then formative is providing uh, information to the learner yeah. to enhance their knowledge and skills, et cetera, in a particular domain, right? Yeah, yeah. That yeah. distinction, I think, is yeah. completely gone because, right. as you said, you know, if I make one mistake in class today, that's not going to have a major impact on my you know, profile or my, right. you know, body of knowledge and skills in a particular domain, right? Yeah. And yeah. so as an employer, for example, or, you know, as an admissions officer, um, if I could, if I, well, here's where it gets really interesting, <laughs> because let's say that you give me your profile and maybe you've made a, a pre-selection, maybe you haven't included, if you're applying for, you know, a, a postgraduate <clears throat> degree here at Oxford University in, in English literature, maybe when you submit your application, you don't include your math uh, exam scores or your math right. Uh, performance, right? right? I certainly wouldn't, I can tell <laughs> you that, right? So you, you may have curated as a learner, interesting, yeah. uh, some of, of what you wish to share. Now, as a, an admissions officer or an employer or whatever the case may be, I can then engage, possibly even in conversation or using natural language processing, with that body of knowledge. Right. Because, and it, maybe I do it as a human being or maybe I use my own curated AI, it doesn't mm-hmm. matter, but then I can query for a particular context, like a particular job or a particular program, I can say, this program consists of the following you know, elements. It requires the following you know, attitudes and skills and knowledge, etc. Yeah. To yeah. what extent does Ben have the ability to engage in X, Y, and Z in the context of this, sorry, this particular <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, situation, for example? Yeah. And yeah. then I get a level of insight into your aptitude and your, you know, your yeah. potential for whatever that may be, that is, you know, an, an <laughs> that's you know, in infinitely more useful than your exam scores. Yeah, of course, absolutely. And and you know, at the moment when we talk about assessment, we're often distinguishing between scores and kind of portfolios of evidence. Mm-hmm. You know, those are two different things. Yes, but uh, they don't have to be. Mm. You know, uh, portfolios of evidence are essentially data, mm. uh, which can be interrogated. Yep. Uh, as you say so a, again um, a, a kind of nice blurring of a of something that's a problem at the moment that distinction yeah 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 very and again unanticipated <laughs> consequences because yeah you know that that leads to a lot of questions and uh, a lot of potential dangers but i also see a lot of potential opportunities because you know going back to the earlier example if as a learner as an individual doesn't even have to be just in education but if I now have a level of control over, for example, what I wish to share, right? Uh, and if I can actually, for example, um, if I can actually show you all of the things that I've done, then that is potentially a lot more beneficial to me than you know just an individual score which was derived from a time when perhaps I had a headache and didn't do my best. Mm. Or I might be able to share with you the things that I did outside of formal education. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Which are not captured normally through assessments, etc., but which may be equally important for uh, the job that I'm applying for. I, I think that's such a good point because, you know, l- as we know, language uh, competence is multidimensional. Um, we all 
kind of object to the way that it's it's uh, summed up as a single score or a single grade but it's the need for that is that human beings are making decisions about whether you're suitable for something or other yeah. and they can only handle you know that one dimension and that's why it gets summed up as a single score mm. uh, if those decisions are being aided by uh, uh, an ai system which is able to interrogate to to um, to handle more than one dimension of your competence mm. then there's no need to reduce everything to single Yep. scores and mm. and even if you do have a sophisticated system that allows for a multivariate analysis of different mm. variables that may impact on your global score or what have you yeah. that is only a measure of your your constellation of uh, abilities etc in one moment in time and so if we look at Uh, something like complex dynamic systems theory, which, of course, in the last few years has really started to become more uh, recognized for its, its potential in, in our field. Sorry, can I, can I just clarify yeah. what that is? I was just about okay, to tell okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> Then uh, it, it allows for a recognition of all of the different variables um, that not only impact directly on what you're interested in observing, for example, your language proficiency scores, but also shows how all of these different variables impact each other and okay. in what direction. So, for example, if you take a, a complex construct like motivation, which we talked about yesterday, uh, then you can see that something might impact motivation, but not directly. It might be through something else. Mm. But if I don't, you know, uh, and... If you're able to capture that complexity and if you're able to capture that not just at one moment in time, but if you're able to do that over a period of time and see how it shifts and turns and what have you as a result perhaps of your instruction or the feedback that I've received or the materials that I've engaged with, in addition to the things that I do outside of the classroom, in addition to the social interaction that I have with my classroom peers, well, that is a far more rich uh, picture than you know a, a single uh, measure would yeah. be able to give us. Yeah. Right. Hi, what do you think of um, a lot of the kind of gamification that is kind of being built into learning systems? Um, and it sometimes has a feel to me of um, almost behaviorist mm -hmm. approach. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you get rewarded or you get punished, uh, depending on whether you get something right or, or not. You know, is uh, when we talk about delivery, I suppose this links on to feedback as well. You know, how... Is that the direction that we're going in? Is it going to become more and more like that? It's a really interesting question, mm. actually, because mm. you know you mentioned it's related to feedback, and it, mm. I guess there's a blurring mm. which didn't exist before between um, well, what would you call it, like immediate, like an immediate recast that a teacher might use, a correction, right? Yeah. You, you make a mistake, and I, you know, correct it in in the context of a conversation or what have you, separate from say an exam or a test. Yeah. And, and this almost kind of blurs the boundaries between those two. But to, to answer your question with the gamification, and especially the behavioral or behavioristic mm. uh, approach to that, I'm, I'm actually increasingly ambivalent about that because for a long time, and I think that will be the general uh, atmosphere in our field, is that, well, we've moved away from behaviorism. So surely this is something from the 1950s and 60s and we know it doesn't yeah. work. But then you look at, for example, meta-analyses like by John, John Hattie, And you find that um, checklists are actually, um, I think it might even be the greatest impact uh, of, of all the, the different um, you know, feedback um, uh, measures uh, on, on learners' performance. Mm. You know, having a simple checklist, did you do this? Did you make sure? Yeah. Did you compare? Did you, you know, yeah. check, check, check? So again, it's that it's that question of efficiency and effectiveness because yeah. you know maybe a language lab from the 1950s or doing checklists all day every day or your example of the personalized yeah. university yeah. could be probably you know possibly yeah. the most efficient way of, of doing things. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree with you. I agree. But with you. not the most effective, especially yeah. not if learners are going to be bored yeah. and become demotivated and disengaged from the learning process entirely. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's really interesting. Thanks for listening to this episode of Talking ELT, the easiest place to learn about the big issues in language teaching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to learn more about this issue and others like it. 
If you want to learn more about emerging technology like AI, big data, and more, you can download our new position paper on the topic, written by Hayao. Just follow the link in the description. Thanks for listening.